What's going on, Swim fans? Welcome to a special Whiteboard Wednesday. In today's video, I'm analyzing Katie Ledecky's freestyle technique. In this video, we're gonna break it down looking at the footage. I'm gonna walk through it with you guys, and I'm gonna break down all the things that make her the fastest freestyler in the world. Correction, she's the fastest distance swimmer in the world, but that doesn't stop her from being dominant in the 200, 400, 800, and 1500. She's a legend, she's the queen of distance swimming, and today we're gonna break it all down. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome to my swim pro where we share the latest and greatest to help you improve your performance and health both in and out of the water. So if you guys like this content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and let me know in the comments which other swimmers you'd like me to analyze. And without further ado, let's begin. Katie Ledecky is the queen of distance swimming, and she is dominant from start to finish, but why is she so fast? The goal of this video is to really show some tips and tricks so that way you can apply them to your own swimming. Now, when we take a look at Katie Ledecky's swimming, the first thing I wanna pay attention to is the body position. She has an incredible body line. What does that mean? It means as she swims, her total body is riding really, really high in the water. Let me draw a line so you guys can see what I'm talking about. That is the body line. Now, if you look at it, her eyes are looking pretty much straight down. Her hips are high and her body is occupying very little space in the water. She's swimming pretty much 50% of her body is above the surface of the water. That is absolutely fantastic and that is what we aspire to do. How can you improve that? You can improve that by focusing on your head position. She has fantastic head position. Now, if we look at her stroke, there are some areas you can actually improve on this. After she takes, or before she takes the breath, she lifts her head up. Now, if you take a look at that, if you see now, she went from looking down and now her eyes are looking forward. What happens when you lift your head up? If you guys actually can see, her body is starting to have a little bit of an arc in it. And so instead of having that flat body line like that, now there's a little bit more displacement of water and that extra resistance actually slows you down. So even the best swimmers in the world always have these little things that they can continue to improve. Now, even, even with a head tilt like that, her body position is still incredible. It's better than 99.9% .9 of swimmers. However, there are always ways that you can improve. Now let's keep watching this video and let's look at some other things that we notice. One thing that comes to uh, you know any experienced swimmer is that she doesn't really kick a lot. How is she going so fast? Here it looks like she's got a little bit more kick. But if we go back to an earlier part of the video, you know, a distance race, she's not really using her legs at all. They're kind of just dragging. This is what we call a two beat kick. And that means she's taking one kick per every stroke. And this is more to balance the body's positioning. It's not really as a primary driver. And I guess the big takeaway here is that you don't want to over focus on your kick, especially the longer the distance. If you're a triathlete, distance swimmer, Having a kick is great for foundational support of your body position, not for driving propulsion. You should be really focusing on the upper body rotation and hip driven rotation, not using your legs too much. This is towards the end of the race. You can see more of a six beat or four beat kick. That means three kicks per every arm stroke cycle. Um, and that's fine. Another thing that we need to look at with Katie Ledecky or any good freestyler is the early vertical forearm. So I'm gonna break that down here on this clip right here. So we take the stroke, and as you can see, the fingertips are extended out. You're really reaching and trying to maximize that distance per stroke. But as soon as your fingertips slide into the water, if we take a look here, and I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit, we're gonna play it nice and slow. We start to initiate that catch, and as you can see, the arm starts to bend a little bit. I'm gonna use this angle tool, and you can see, the arm is starting to bend. That is initiating the early vertical forearm because we want to pull the water back behind us. We want to grab the water and pull ourselves forward. Let's go ahead and follow this through. As you can see, we have almost a paddle being developed from the elbow all the way to the fingertips. And this paddle, this early vertical forearm, allows us to pull the most amount of water because we've increased the surface area. Okay, so your body's flat, but we wanna increase that surface area as much as possible so we can pull as much water as we can and really grab, like anchor your hand in the water and pull yourself forward. And Kayla Decky does this better than any freestyle swimmer that we've seen in distance. Uh, look at this, it's on both arms, clearly, but you can see it even from the top, the hand entry, let's zoom in on this hand entry. 
So the hand is entering at about 11 and one o'clock if we're using the hands of the clock. And when we hit the water, we're hitting with our fingertips. This is a little bit faster, we're slowing it down. And you can even see from this angle, yeah, you can see the high elbow catch underneath the water. You can see right there, yeah, slow motion. There we go, uh-huh, perfect. Yeah, let's zoom in just a little bit. Yep, you can see the bend in the elbow even underneath the water. And that's because you're leveraging as an anchor point and you're pulling yourself forward. Let's go ahead and clear that and zoom back out. Keep watching the footage. Yeah, and it's really, it's really fascinating to look at some of the best swimmers and how they do this. Here's a front facing angle. You can clearly see that the hand is entering with the fingertips at about a 45 degree angle parallel to the surface of the water. And as soon as the fingertips are in and extend, reaching a few inches or centimeters further, the high elbow catch is initiated immediately. And it's on both hands. Um, if you notice, she does breathe on one side. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. But just pay attention to how clean that hand entry is. Uh, it looks like it could be a little bit cleaner on the left side. Left arm is making a little bit more splash. We look at that high elbow catch again. You can see that the paddle is really being developed at every single point. Now the next thing I wanna point out in Kayla Decky's stroke and what makes her such a fascinating swimmer at an elite level is how good her push off the wall is and even her dive. She has some of the best underwaters of any female swimmer, period, let alone distance swimmer. She definitely has the best underwaters of any distance swimmer in the world ever. But she's even competitive against some swimmers in the 100 freestyle or even some of the butterfly races, which is absolutely amazing. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. You push off the wall, you hit the good streamline. I mean, one dolphin kick and she's already six meters off the wall. A lot of the other swimmers at this level are barely making it five meters off the wall. And you can see how tight her streamline is off the push a very graceful five or six meter push off and she builds her underwater dolphin kicks through the duration of any of her races. So whether it's a 400, 800 or 1500, she actually builds. This is the, uh, the final turn of an 800. It looks like she's destroying the world record line per usual. Here's that underwater push. Looks like a few dolphin kicks and she's not gonna take her first full arm stroke until eight or nine meters off of the wall. It just goes to show even in long course swimming, the best distance swimmer in the world, she's still able to leverage that underwater streamline. Here's a 200 freestyle from a Grand Prix meet. This is absolutely insane, look at this. It looks like she goes 10 plus meters underwater off the wall. This is the 200 from the distance queen. Look at her. Can you see that? She's underwater 10 meters off the wall. She's, you know, a body length ahead of everyone underneath the water. Here it is again. I'm gonna, you know, in case you didn't see her, that, that's her lane right there. Take a look at that. There she is. She's gonna emerge underneath the water. Wow, look at that kick. Amazing. 10 meters plus. Um, now here's the next thing we want to look at with her stroke. She has a gallop stroke. She breathes every two strokes. And sometimes swimmers think that you really have to breathe on bilaterally, you have to breathe on both sides. And while it is good to have stroke balance, there are actually a number of benefits to breathing only on one side. Now you don't wanna be completely imbalanced, but having a little bit of a timing, you know, a difference, or you have a little bit more bias on one side, allows you to have more rhythm. And when you're doing distance swimming, basically the 200 and up, you need to have that rhythm. If you notice, she breathes every two strokes, she breathes to her right side, and, it's, and it's nat it looks natural, it looks like a gallop. Now you don't wanna go up and down. That's a mistake a lot of swimmers make. They go up and down and that's what, not what we want because when you go down, then you're creating resistance. When you go up, you're also gonna go down. Here's, a, here's chocolate milk. Now, if you guys haven't seen this video, I did a duet with her where you swim with a cup of chocolate milk loaded on your, on your forehead, not on your forehead, on the back of your head. And if you wanna be able to do this successfully, whether you're doing this uh, with chocolate milk or not, it's kind of besides the point. You have to have really good balance and stability. Your, it starts with your head position. You're looking down. If we break it down here, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and so, let's zoom in here. So we've got the chocolate milk. We have spotted the chocolate milk. Now her eyes are looking down, it's good. Now I like the, the hand extension. The body position is very, very good. And what makes this so fascinating is that she's able to maintain a pretty good tempo all the way through. Let's watch it. Now you can see some of the things we talked about. She has really good high elbow. 
meaning her elbow is always above her hand. That's good for preventing injury as well. She's entering the water with her fingertips about you know, 12 to 18 inches, about half a meter in front of her shoulder at 11 and one. The cup is completely flat. I mean, th this is very impressive. I did it myself, it took a few tries. Uh, I didn't spill any chocolate milk. This is a good drill. Maybe try it without, definitely try it without glass. Plastic cup, of course. And then of course at the end, you've got to sip the chocolate milk. I have one more drill here with Katie Ledecky, uh, and this is in, in her home, it looks like. And this is a dry land exercise, really working on stability, leg strength. Oftentimes people think that distance swimmers don't need to have that strength and conditioning component. I disagree with that. You know, every athlete, you know, as a swimmer, you're an athlete and you have to be training your body. It looks like this is a good balance drill, engaging your quads, your hamstrings, um, you know, glutes, everything is involved to really stabilize sort of doing semi one-legged uh, squats right here using the arms for balance and it just goes to show that strength and conditioning dry land training you know training in the water out of the water the mental mindset working on technique the best athletes in the world are doing this every single day and even if you're not trying to go to the olympics or something like that doesn't mean that you can't try and achieve your dreams as well whether that's qualifying for a state championship or a national championship dropping time in your competition doing your first triathlon doing an ironman it doesn't really matter, but whatever your goals are, you've come to the right place. So if you guys enjoyed this content, make sure you give it a big like. Let me know in the comments what other swimmers you'd like to see me analyze. And if you haven't already joined our Facebook group, we have one of the largest Facebook groups in the world for swimmers who are all passionate about getting better. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, make sure you join it in the link in the description below. We have thousands of swimmers from over 100 different countries, everyone from beginners to former Olympians, they're all in there and everyone in between. So make sure you check it out. If you haven't already checked out the My Swim Pro app available for iPhone and Android, we have dryland training programs, swim training programs, workouts, technique videos, like the one that you're watching right now. It's all available in the My Swim Pro app. So make sure you check it out, iPhone and Android. Until next time, happy swimming. <laughs>